a leader unleashes the ability of each person to improve their performance some leaders have the talent to be good coaches and build capability and leadership in others today as part of leadership series by global tv we have one such leader professor dr k shankaran welcome to our discussions on leadership uh, by global tv dr shankaran thank you thank you very much pleasure to be here mr tom suryak very nice to be here professor dr shankaran is the director of justice case hegde institute of management since 2012 he has worked as a senior lecturer in stathclyde business school he has been a visiting academic at university of sharja he has worked at tfi management institute spj institute of management he has been an associate vice president of business consulting group and many more he has been a project head dr shankaran is a graduate from iit karakpur and he is a pgdbm from iim bangalore he is also got a phd from kent university ohio usa professor shankaran thank you so much for joining us in this discussion on leadership thank you my 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 pleasure my we privilege we assure our listeners will benefit from your experiences as a leader some leaders show leadership qualities from a early age maybe from school days or college days in your leadership journey did you show leadership qualities from a early age or you build it up as you progressed in your career well uh, i don't think i showed any leadership qualities early in life as far as i was concerned but looking back uh, i realized later in life and not quite recently when i met one of my uh, old classmates Uh, he, he 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 was a banker he's retired now uh, i realized that uh, in all the school situations whether i was in a hostel or in uh, other places i never stood for an election but always a uh, teachers chose me to be the class leader or uh, i was chosen to be a hostel leader okay and uh, once uh, only once i was actually kind of close to being a elected person when some students asked me to become a leader that was in bombay when i had left uh, kerala shows after school till the 10th standard i was really new and raw in, in in bombay but in my second year there i was there for two years at that time in bombay that stint uh, i was uh, kind of asked by students to stand for elections Okay. but something happened last minute and you know so the the uh, very kind professor it was uh, at wilson college hostel uh, dr david uh, he told me uh, shankaran you would be ideal but uh, time is over you you are a very fair person so uh, only recently i was reflecting on this but i never stood for an election thought that i should be a uh, you know kind of a i never considered myself a leader actually Uh, at that time but i always was enamored by uh, mathematics and uh, languages and knowledge i would think so i thought that's my strength uh, at least after seventh standard uh, uh, and so on when you know kind of a transformation happened to me i think i became a decent student in fact i became a good student from eighth standard <laughs> i think onwards till then i was not a you know i was just an average student uh, but i think even before that uh, my uh, teachers considered me worthy of being a class uh, it, it used to be class leader it used to be okay called. okay yeah. so it, i mean I, i think it's a good lesson for the listeners so you don't need to be elected as a leader if you have leadership qualities or you build your leadership qualities based on your inner your strengths your knowledge and not because somebody has elected you as a leader or you don't need to really stand for an election to become a leader i think That's it's very clear in uh, your experience is there any person you can think of who would have influenced your uh, leadership styles uh no i i i really can't but i was always inspired by literature okay my my, my family had a tradition of uh, being uh, you know students of literature 
okay. um, um, all languages you can say, especially English language. And I was always uh, enamored and you know impressed by Shakespearean quotes. And I, I grew up in an environment of listening to you know quotes from uh, Shakespearean dramas. So I know oh, I knew a little bit of uh, the characters and the good and the bad characters, so to say. Um, okay. and the dilemmas of, you know, especially Shakespearean tragedies. So I guess that I had an advantage even when I came back, you know, later in college, when we used to take part in, you know, some kind of quiz and so on. Okay. Yeah. I, but I, not really, I can't think of anybody, you know, one person as such, but yes, the, 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 the traditional uh, Indian, you know, thinking, uh, the, the, the Indic thinking, you know, you have uh, people like, uh, I would say at that time, you know, uh, who were the, the, the heroes of uh, the, uh, the the independence movement? They all okay, inspired okay. me. Yes, yes, okay. uh, that was inspirational for me. I remember sending. I mean, now that you're asking, please. You know, uh, I, I sending my pocket money to Shastri Ji okay. uh, du during the 1965 war. I sent a okay. money order. Until very okay. recently, I think it's still there at, in in my native place. I have that money order form. And okay. it was done voluntarily. I sent whatever collection I had from Vishu, Vishu Kainetam, and so on. So I sent the whole mm -hmm. money to him. Yeah. That's so I, I think I was inspired by uh, such uh, <laughs> leaders of the independence Which, movement and uh, yeah, political leaders. Yes. It shows like you were always concerned with things happening around. I think it's one of the good qualities of a leader is you know we are always <laughs> leaders generally are concerned about what's happening around us yes my 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 father was in the uh, armed forces i mean not exactly the military but he was with the police service special okay. armed police and so he was in kerala as well as tamil nadu so for mm -hmm. 8 years he was in the border areas he was in okay. that time nefa which is arunachal pradesh now and okay. he was in uh, nagaland during the you know some of the insurgency things uh, so for Eight years, uh, I, I saw him uh, as a person. I, I used to see him only during vacations that he used to come, especially when okay. I was young. Yeah, yeah, very young, that is. You can think of any incident. Uh, you told about your election in uh, the college. Uh, this thing. Any other incident which influenced your leadership? Maybe in college or even <laughs> in your career or somewhere? Yes, actually. You had an impact on your you know, thinking you as a leader or becoming... Uh, uh, yes, I, uh, there are se uh, several of them. I mean, I wouldn't say leader, but some kind of a leadership position. Yes, okay. because uh, I, I, I was, uh, you know, I, for four years I was not working um, in a formal company. I was on my own. Okay. I wrote a book. I did uh, some meditation. I was into Vipassana meditation. Three times I could go. I wrote a book at that time, which was essentially... It turned out to be a novel, finally. I could only convey deeper thoughts through stories. Uh, so I was, uh, at that time, I kind of accidentally became the general secretary of a housing society where I had a house. Okay. I only had this house <laughs> as some savings or something because, you know, working, um, especially in a, not in a metro. So there was really a limitation of, you know, kind of projects I could, undertake and be happy about it. And I was very choosy about the kind of projects I would take. And okay. people are not really willing to pay money for knowledge or insights. They're more mm -hmm. willing to pay money for contacts. And I had no contacts actually. And I didn't want to if at all I had, mm -hmm. really. So at that time I became a, 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 a the general secretary. And uh, there were some big issues between one group, which, uh, which was headed by the builder and the okay. other group, which was actually trying to create a society. Okay. At that time, I think that was my big, one of the biggest uh, leadership lessons by being lonely alone mm -hmm. and kind of negotiating uh, something based on, you know, the facts of the case and, and what is right and kind of okay. telling people how we can form an association. So we formed an association when uh, the, the state uh, legislature uh, had an act, but that act hadn't actually uh, Though it specified a registrar, but the registrar was not actually notified through okay. a gazette. So even if you form an association under this particular act passed by the state uh, assembly, it could mm -hmm. not be actually registered. Okay. So the, we had a lawyer person who was, uh, you know, one of the residents actually, 
so we were right. working together. And at that time, I realized how important it is to go back to fundamentals. So the lawyer said, you can't form an association because this particular act is not, you know, you can't register it. You can okay. put all those words. And everybody was claiming that they had a, you know, registered thing, registered uh, association. So at that time, this is a great lesson I had. So we had a, having a conversation. So this man, this gentleman, very, very nice uh, gentleman, uh, he wanted to really help. He said, you can't form an association. I said, in my innocence, I said, mm -hmm. in my age standard, I, and I said, right to form an association is a fundamental right. Got it. So he said, no, it doesn't work here. Act. So he kind of, you know, he, he was uh, uh, jocularly deriding me because he had an LLM and he was a lawyer. And here's okay. a person, a layman. So what just came out of my mouth was, you know acts, but I know jurisprudence. Okay. And that was a moment of epiphany for me. I said, there must be some way. This, this country, and by then I had visited other countries. I was in US. This was after my PhD and so on. I realized that, you know, we had to go back to fundamentals. So okay. more than anything, acts, what is important is to me is the directive principles of constitution. Right. right? And we formed an association, very interestingly, because there okay. is a charitable societies act, which is applicable to part of this state uh, of 1938, okay. through which we could form an association. So one very interesting supportive lawyer, he asked me, what are you doing? I said, I'm doing this. Are you getting any money? No. In fact, I'm spending a lot of time, but I'm learning lessons in management, right. the, the negotiatory kind of learning. I can tell you it was amazing. Both okay. these groups who are so trusting of me, they would do anything for me. And Very we formed an association. We were not a single, let me, I mean, you can, I mean, I, this is a fact, without paying any money to the water authority or the electricity department, we cut down the, 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 the fines that were levied because of the okay. actions of uh, one person. And okay. uh, I don't want to blame anybody because that blame game doesn't help. And that, that's the beauty of being an academic, actually, you know, in academia, we need to state facts and, you know, take it up to a level we, we don't blame anybody. So I find this a very convenient way to kind of see humanity together and so right. on. So, it's a, that's, so yeah, so, so we formed an association and, and it was amazing how we can achieve things in this country if we lead from behind. So I right. created my own vocabulary and said, that must be trusteeship management. That must be servant leadership. But you say, right. I'm here because you guys, you know, are benefited. If you think I'm not benefited, I should leave this place. That is for people who are actually reporting to you. Right. But to the people above, you're saying, hey, thank you for giving me this responsibility. And I'm really thankful for, you know, doing the kind of thing. So we have to be extremely transparent with people uh, upwardly as well as downwardly. But I think responsibility and authenticity, especially authenticity, comes from uh, people below. And I think yeah. one area where this can be exercised fairly uh, straightforward is uh, uh, the academic uh, area. Right. Uh, right. There, there are no state secrets. Right. The students, if the students are benefited, there are no secrets. I mean, it's like unlike diplomacy, yes. state That's secrets, true. or even companies. Yeah. So that is one great lesson that. Uh, uh, I yeah, think I in an uh, informal organization like uh, housing society, Correct. getting acceptance is a much more difficult thing and, than a corporate world where it is specified like if you occupy That's this correct. position, this is your. So I think it's a great thing like, you know, you're able to get the people together. So probably one of the things which you used was your knowledge as well as your common sense. That saying that, okay, this could work if yes. this happens. Yes. So, and, 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 and to appeal to the 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 good sense the of the finer people. side ah finer side of people wonderful yes. i think it's a good yes. lesson for anyone like use yes. your uh, knowledge and your common sense to get facts together which will work in favor of your decisions absolutely actually practice the idea of positive some game absolutely I, I think many many uh, i've seen this with students especially youngsters uh, their ability to see that I can be benefited in the longer run by creating benefit for the other person in right. negotiations, for instance. That I think yeah. is that, that that is something which we need to to, to convey to youngsters. Hey, right. think of the right. longer term. What will happen? You know, you're not right. setting up uh, boundaries by not setting up boundaries. You're actually reducing the resistance and you know help. So you're actually helping others to help you. Absolutely. You know, kind of thing.
Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. You are a professor. You are handling a lot of students. I mean, I have seen yes. the majority of your times you have spent on academics uh, side of uh, profession. That's right. So what, according to you, is a, if, if you have to pick out one quality of a good leader, according to you, what it would be? I think, yeah, it depends on the, I think it depends on the domain. Okay. Uh, but as you said, yeah, Professor, I, 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 I had a, a business school. Uh, yeah. I think one thing that really helps in, in the educational institution is trust. Okay. Trust, is, trust is the most important thing. So we have to trust youngsters to do, you know, outstanding things. Even if they are not okay. ready, they become ready because of the kind of ecology we can create. In fact, it's easier to do that with youngsters, actually. Right. Uh, because they're not hardened and they're not, you know, uh, kind of a thing. So I think trust is the most important thing, but not be naive. Right. Uh, of course, in that process, but to trust the deepest uh, inclinations and uh, dispositions or what should I say, the, the, the inner core of the being of the person uh, we have to trust. So, so as a leader, you feel we should create that element of trust in the people who work around us. Yes, yes. And take small risks uh, so okay. that, you know, even if we lose, we don't lose our humanity, a sense of humanity. Wonderful. So we take small risk and slowly go on increasing the risk so that that person is part of you. And then we can, we can give big uh, projects to that person. So invisibility. Can you elaborate on this invisibility? Because you uh, mentioned meaning, Yes, invisibility in the sense uh, to, to, when we lead from behind, they will think that I'm doing everything. Okay. And uh, you are invisible uh, yeah. and uh, things are happening. And All at right. the bottom of your heart, you may also doubt that, am I really required here? <laughs> but others come and then when you discuss this, they say, no, no, this is, you know, and, and, and you can also, you know, check it out actually you know when you're not there certain things happen you say this would not have happened if i were there kind of thing right, happens right, right. and that, that that should not fan our ego of course right. it should not uh, but then you know you know at the bottom of your head there is some contribution you're doing but it's an invisible contribution which is just absolutely it's not about time it's it's, it's about five percent of the time is enough to do that actually you know, kind of a thing. I think, I think that it's, it, it is to say the finest form of delegation. Like the absolutely. people who are actually doing it should not feel, you know, somebody else is delegating it to me at the same same time it gets done. Wonderful. I think you are absolutely, absolutely right. That is the yeah. highest form of delegation. Yeah. Well, delegation is not understood properly, perhaps, you know, now that you Correct. say this. Yes, 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 very true. Because you are a coach, you are a trainer, you are a teacher. So you know, like, how to get somebody else to do the job. And you train them or coach them in such a way that they take up your yes. responsibilities and execute it better than yes. us, probably. That, that's correct. And, and the, the beauty of uh, uh, educational institutions, there's so much to do. Correct. In, in, in the sense of writing, thinking, yeah. new things. So if all these administrative things and all these things, if the students are self-disciplined and they don't right. have to meet you, they, they, they can meet the concerned faculty, concerned administrator, I mean, you know, the non-teaching and get things done. Everybody is happy. Very nice. Very nice. Very yeah. interesting, actually. Yeah. Any, any moment or any incident which you cherish, you told about your experience in... Uh, your housing society, anything you can relate to your school or college or where you cherish as a, as a leader, you know, you, it comes back to you again and again. When I was in another business school, I used to okay. teach uh, a subject called, uh, I mean, this, this is what suddenly comes to my mind, uh, yeah, a yeah. subject called learning organizations. Okay. Uh, a learning org so this was based on uh, a very, very, I think a difficult concept. Uh, students used to find it difficult to, to kind of understand it you know so right. this this person uh, called peter senge very interest interestingly the senge the name comes from tibet uh, okay. you know sing singa yeah, so yes, singa yes, is, yes. yeah singe is actually uh, represents the lion i mean all this i came to know later uh, he was in mit Massachusetts institute of technology and professor he's still there yeah so he wrote this wonderful book called uh, uh, called uh, the fifth discipline i i took the risk of you know offering a elective course in learning organizations. 
Okay. When I was with another institution, uh, uh, management institute, one of the premier institutions uh, in the country, actually. And um, 10 years later, yeah. one of the students sent uh, a note saying that he, he was at that time employed in Saudi Arabia okay. and a fairly senior position. And he was going to MIT for a session with Peter Senge. So he writes to me, so when, uh, when I learned these things from you, most of the things were kind of difficult for me. And it's, it's you know, something to that effect, saying that most of the thing went up my head kind of thing, you know. But right. now I'm going there and I'm really excited because I went back to the book and learned. So this long-termness excites me. Because okay. in the short run, maybe it's kind of a self-defense, you know, because in the short run, you have to be sometimes tough, sometimes you have to, you know, you, you, you have this dilemma of students getting low marks and so on and so forth. Right, uh, right, so, right. so that that kind of a long-termness and students coming back. I mean, there's so many of them come back. I mean, this is the experience of all teachers. Uh, right, they come back right. and, uh, and give you that compliment saying that uh, I, I, I was benefited. Yeah, that, I think that's the most, that's a high point for an academic. This is one. Another incident as a, as a student, I must tell you this. So when I was doing my PhD, I had a wonderful teacher. Okay. And no exams in that course. We had, you know, I had 17, 16 or 17, actually 16. 17, 17, they said, you okay, you don't have to take it kind of a thing. Uh, I had to take courses at post MBA level. Right. Post MBA level. That, that means they were really tough, tough subjects, you know, maximum you can take three in a semester, which means, you know, so there was one uh, which, 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 which was in competitive strategy, uh, you know, basically looking at three, four books and really kind of deconstructing what this author said kind of a thing. Right. So this professor, uh, this was in Kent State University in Ohio. So this professor had only one paper to be submitted for the term, just one paper, no exams, no nothing. At the okay. end of the semester, submit a paper, which is 100% authentic, your stuff, no copying, nothing. You have to, you have to create a, you know, uh, a, a summary of what you learn from different books and synthesizing, mainly synthesizing. So when I went from India, with due respect to our systems, I mean, or you can say disrespect, sorry. Um, I thought I was a smart guy. I got, got full scholarship. I started writing the paper about two weeks before the submission date. Okay. And sure enough, I got a B. He didn't give me an A because okay. there were mistakes. It was not properly done. But at the end of the semester, I, I discovered, I felt in the core of in me, it said, I only deserved a B. And next semester, that was not the next semester, but the one after that. So okay. about six months later, the same gentleman was offering another course, again at a doctoral level course. I said, I'm going to crack this guy because this guy has something in him. He was a person who was attacking the Likert scale, you know, the, the famous Likert scale where you yes, say yes, yes, fully okay. agree, don't agree. So he was a guy who was against it. I mean, amazingly, uh, you know, extremely well-educated uh, person. So he was against it. And obviously not many publications would like to challenge it, uh, yeah. you know, Likert uh, scale and all. Anyway, so I knew this person had something deeply in him. So I started working on day one. I started working on the paper again, one paper at the end of the term. I started working on it. At the end of that term, I submitted this paper. And all he wrote was actually in, in, in that university, we had A, B, C, D, and F. Five, uh, you know. F also, yeah. yeah okay. F also was there, but then only five categories. And yeah. uh, what he did, what he gave me was he, he wrote A plus. And oh. then he wrote, Ah, then he wrote, now you got a handle on this. Now you got a handle mm. on this. No Wonderful. excellent, nothing. It, it is a moment of epiphany. And actually, for my sake, for my conscience, I consider that paper with that A plus written as more valuable than my degree certificate. Wonderful. Very nice. Very nice. And I, I tell my students, I keep it here. I, I, I don't have my degrees anywhere here in this room right now. I have some soft copy on my computer, but only so hard copy I have is that paper Wonderful. that I wrote on which at the, on the first page you wrote A plus. So I, I found how it is important to have true thinkers and scholars 
in the academia. That's right. Who respect other sectors, but who don't pamper them. Right. You know, who, who don't come down from the from the need to think with purity. So for me, knowledge became, you know, knowledge is really pure thinking without looking at the color of the skin, without looking at any other thing. So that is that is a very high point. If that, I mean, I think it's a leadership lesson as a follower. Absolutely. I would like to interpret from a different angle. Please, please. You took the effort to actually challenge yourself because yes. in the first incident, Correct. you got a B and you probably felt you could do much better. And when the same professor offered a different course, you went and Correct. it's actually challenging yourself, not challenging the professor. Absolutely. I will be able to do it better. And this is something yes. which I think every leader should have in them because every time leaders generally fail more often than succeed. So every time they fail, they should be willing to say, I will challenge myself to take up the next step. So very nice. Yeah. I mean, I was just interpreting it from a different it's perspective. A, yeah, it's, 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 it's a very nice thing too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And this, this gentleman, this professor had the inner core to be trusted, uh, to be, you know, kind of a person. Yeah. Very nice. Very interesting, actually. Yeah, very interesting because in, in industry, we, we, we can't take many risks. Right. Actually, you know, especially banking. How can yes. you trust with somebody who can't count properly money, for instance, you know, whatever you do, yes. for instance, I'm not saying fronted, but in the academia, you can take huge risks. We You're don't right. even know at this point, and we don't know whether a person who gets A will succeed in life. Invariably, they don't. <laughs> it, they it probably is, a person's, is less compared to a guy who gets B or a B plus. I, I think so. Who yes. knows the stuff, but has got many other qualities. Absolutely, so, I agree. So, so the risk, and also risk is only in, in, you know, so long as we are fair, then students accept us. That is another beautiful thing. That's Youngsters accept for what we are, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah. So I think it's a, it's it's very interesting to talk about these things. Just one, uh, did you have? Of course, you spoke about your challenges in uh, many leadership. Any big challenge you faced, which. You were oh. able to, as a, as a leader, because you handle, well, as an individual, when you handle faculty and administration and all that stuff, or anywhere. Yeah, because once you work in I, various industries. Yeah, but many challenges. Uh, one challenge, uh, I, I was about to say something about as a student, uh, but fair then, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, if it's okay, time is there, I'll yeah, tell you two of them. Enough, one was, I was. Uh, you know, after, during the biggest challenge I faced in my education was uh, a two. One, when I moved from uh, my home state of Kerala to Bombay University. So I was competing with uh, 12 standard students, people who finished 11th. And I was, I had gone through, you know, SSLC 10 standard. So right, I right. went into my 11th standard of my class uh, was in Bombay, where students were already finished their 11th. 11th. Okay. Uh, it, it, yeah, it, so this week it used to be called first year science. I was in science student. So that was an extremely big challenge because the language problem was the Hindi was an issue. English was okay. I never spoken English, but I was, I mean, I'm pretty good as I was saying. I, I, I knew right. written, I was, I was better than others, in fact, in the class. But science was a big problem. I worked hard. And um, actually, I don't attribute that success to myself. Uh, I, there was some kind of divine uh, impact is what I believe. Okay. That yeah. Same thing happened uh, in, in when I was in the United States uh, doing my PhD. Okay. After all the coursework and uh, doing the comprehensive exam, uh, they call you ABD, all but dissertation. Mm -hmm. And they put the doctorate within brackets saying that all yeah, you need right. to do is yeah, a dissertation. dissertation okay. Yeah. So uh, when I, so at that time I was kind of uh, uh, enthused to go and join the industry. There was one uh, Indian company I joined at that time. Uh, and during that time, I must have sent about uh, 20 or 30 different, you know, notes to my professor at Kent State from Philadelphia, uh, okay. asking, asking him to agree to the topic. Anything from one page to 20 pages proposal. All of okay. them were rejected. He rejected all of them. 
And I was in a very bad state uh, uh, without any, you know, and I lost my job there. Uh, you know, this was 1992. Uh, there was a recession. I lost my job and I had actually decided to come back without a PhD. Then something very, very interesting happened. I mean, it's, it is, it is again, it was some, you know, I don't know. I, I consider it as, uh, you know, mystical experience. And I okay. was told to stay back uh, and complete the work. Then I went back to the university, dropped everything. I only had two suitcases of things. Everything has, I had sold. I was working and I, I, I was okay. Yes. I mean, I had the typical, you know, trappings of uh, uh, prosperity, car, you know, exercise machine, TV at that time and all that stuff. I sold off everything, cleared up my credit card, went back to the university with two suitcases and about, you know, about maybe about three feet of papers, two bunches, you know, you, you don't have the soft copy at that time. I'm talking about yeah, 92. Right. Yeah. And I went back to the university uh, under very, very trying circumstances financially. Um, though I went from here with full scholarship at that time, the university also will tell you, okay, if you couldn't finish in five years, you're not going to give you money. So the, that had dried up. I couldn't, and I would not have been able to concentrate on teaching or, you know, research and all that because I had to do this. So within six months, I finished the whole thing, including defending the proposal, which okay. I could not do in two and a half years. I finished in in three in two two and a half months and completed the PhD and and a good, I mean, it, it, that thing came in Academy of Management paper was essentially published later, which is considered okay. like the first stage of, uh, um, you know, how good your research is. It, it became a first chapter in a book. Okay. On, uh, published by this, um, an Australian uh, author, uh, co-authored by an Indian, um, I, I mean, edited book. So I, 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 this was the first chapter, actually. My dissertation was the first chapter. So that was the second uh, big uh, challenge. And I've gone through this ups and downs, you know. Imagine getting a, you know, a call from the United States uh, and saying that, okay, you, you come here and teach scholarship. Yeah. And going there with, with absolutely you know, $100, $200 I had in my hand and I landed up and next month's salary coming. And okay. coming back with nothing except a PhD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's... Anyway, I think experiences teach us a lot. Absolutely. Which absolutely. leads to probably yeah. our, you know, these are stepping stones. E e yes, absolutely. Now, you are a lead of, you know, currently you handle an institute by yourself. So That's do you great. really enjoy being a leader? Yeah. I enjoy, but there are also moments of frustration. And okay. I can tell you this, I will say this openly, not because of my students, not because of my colleagues, not because of my management, but because okay. of regulation, regulations. Regulations, okay. Regulations. Regulation, especially in the education sector. Now, there's yeah. no easy solution. Right. Because it, it'll take another 50 years to have the kind of solution that ideally should come forth because we have disempowered the thinking people right. in this country. Is right. what I feel. And we don't have an ecosystem of really, you know, arguing out on a case and in a civilized manner. Right. We, we have lost that ability. I think we had it long ago. We lost that ability. Right. So, yes. But I think 70 to 80% of the time, yes, I enjoy. Um, but other time, it's not just the regulators. It is what the regulators have done to the psyche of the thinkers, the academics. The, the, the academics. So yeah. what happens is you are fighting very small, little, little, little battles for somebody else. Which doesn't contribute to any positive uh, contribution Absolutely. to the society, to academics or anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think so it's I, not only in academics, it's all around us in, uh, in our society. Yeah. I think every leader has to deal with it, whichever industry or whichever area of service you are in. I think everybody faces this uh, because I also deal with a lot of industrial people. I'm sure you're also listening to them. Yeah. So all of them have this problem saying that uh, I can manage my business, but it's very difficult to manage the government yes. and the regulators. Yes, yes. So probably and, some good sense yeah. will prevail at some point of time. Let's I, hope so. I, I hope so. Yes, you're, you're, you're right. And uh, yeah, in a way, industry is more tied up because uh, you have to exactly follow the rules. Yes. Here, one thing we can do, we can do all that is required, but also 
give some additional inputs in a different way to the students, for instance. Right. Change right. the thing a little bit. But the right. disadvantage is that, you know, the openness has to be even more uh, in a way in, in, in the academic field. Because yes. ultimately self-discipline is what gets students to be really, I mean, for a society to be really, really great, it has to be, it's about developing it internally. And that development mm -hmm. happens, I guess, most in the academy. So yes. Yeah. So that is yeah, you, the, you, future, you, the future. Of, the future of uh, the society <sighs> is coming from institutes like yours. I mean, all, all schools and colleges. Yes. 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 The future of the country. That's right. And and uh, how do we disagree? Uh, you know, in a pleasant manner, with the yeah. elders in society, and say this is how it should be, and 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 have that political skill in in a good sense. I'm saying political yes, in a good yes, sense. Yes. Uh, yes. Where, uh, you know, yeah, so the, the scientific uh, this or that is modulated by, you know, compassion, good sense, meritocracy. So, yeah. If you have to give two messages to the uh, youngsters who are aspiring to be leaders, what would that okay. be? Aspiring to be leaders. I think, uh, yeah, one is that they should really reflect about what they're doing uh, okay. constantly and become good human beings and good followers of a system. If they want okay. to change the system, they should not simply become make noise about it. They should keep okay. their emotions uh, in check and use this emotion to change the system where you take everybody together. Right. So sometimes we'll have to make some decisions which may not be great because uh, the system, does, but don't run away from that. Stay there and uh, challenge the system right. in a pleasant manner so that you're effective at the end of the day. Right. So I think that is one advice. Second thing is, I guess, uh, learn from mistakes. Okay. When the chips are down, that's when a real uh, self comes out. And uh, right. learn from mistakes and... Uh, uh, remember, it's it's you know, uh, it, it it's 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 about equanimity, mental equanimity. Outwardly, right. we can be very active, but mental equanimity, and 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 kind of keeping the balance, and just waiting for the good times. Uh, you know, Milton said they also serve who only stand and wait, uh, kind right. of a thing. But then outwardly, be active because we need it. I mean, you, right. you, 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 one has a role to play. So if it's a market share, you have to have a market share. If it's about growth, you have to have the growth. But uh, have some inner kind of silence, which is willing to wait for that you know, opportune moment so that you know, one is able to kind of figure out when to do it. I learned these things only lately, but then I have you know, no regrets. Uh, you know? Yeah, so yeah, I think that would be my advice, the second advice. Very nice, very nice. So your advice to the youngsters is that follow the system, but wait for the right moment and work slowly yes. towards yes. changing rather than making a lot of noise is not going to help it's anyone, to neither help. the current system or the future. What is that's, that, that, that's correct. And despite all the social media and all that, at yes, the end yes, of it, yes. you know, what makes us happy is how we really make a change at a, at, at a very, uh, you know, at a very... In fact, uh, it's very interesting. Today, I got so many messages. Be the change you want to be. I think that was one of the yes, lessons yes. from uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Today being... Yeah, uh, yes. yeah. <laughs> Gandhi Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I saw so many messages in different groups. Yeah. Very nice, uh, Professor. I think it was very interesting and a very different type of thoughts you raised today. I'm sure the thank listeners you. will definitely benefit from this uh, discussions we had. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, I'm sure you are going to be a great inspiration for the people around you. You are, thank you. you are at this point of time. And Th thank you, you thank continue you. for more years to come. Thank you so much. Th thank, thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you.